them, they could save the world. Unfortunately, people aren't stupid. They know their ideas coming from the top just really don't work. And there's a lot of guys saying, follow me, follow me, follow me. What I'm trying to say is if we give the people a plausible plan to go from the bottom to the top, that's something everybody can get behind. That's how you get unity. Yeah. Yeah. And without that unity, we are just fighting against, we're always fighting the same battles. And I think you pointed out in our post interview, corruption is everywhere. The bad guys are doing their job. They're bad. Yeah. They will cheat at every level. So we can't teach people, or at least I can't, Teach people, let's cheat also, and maybe we'll win. No, the second you go down the dark side, you're on the dark side. Thank you so much, Robert X. Johnson, former state parliamentarian. You know what the rules are. You know that the power is laying there on the table. It is there for people to use, and it is a shame for us to say we're not going to be bothered in understanding what our rights are as jurors, understanding what our rights are with these assemblies to take back the the form of the uh, rule of law. We need to take back this at the grassroots level, not be completely uh, focused at the top level. And I think that's a very powerful message. This is something that we can all do. We have to understand that just as you have to earn a living for yourself, for your family, you have to earn your freedom. And there are ways that you can do that. There is a path besides the frustration that we all feel. We see the problems that are there. We understand how this country is coming apart, but there is a path to that. Thank you so much. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can get six months free at PrisonPlanet.tv, but only for one more week. Next Monday, the special that only comes around once a year ends. In fact, we've never offered six months free before, but I really want to get more people to join and to be able to watch the nightly news, to see the live reports we do, the special reports, all my films, ebooks, and so much more. One person can share their membership with 20 people, and you are funding the absolute very leading edge, the vanguard of the resistance to the globalist operation on every front. We have to have our own platform that is harder for them to censor, harder for the system to shut down. PrisonPlanet.tv. We put out the daily radio show free with the video and audio feeds at Infowars.com forward slash show. But it is the members that get the nightly news exclusively and first and the commercial free video podcasts and audio podcasts that are paying it forward and financing and helping so many other people see the truth when we put the videos on Facebook, YouTube, and it's PrisonPlanet.tv that finances so much of the cameras, the equipment, the crew. The reporters, you are becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member. You get exclusive HD, higher quality, get it first. And then you can download it, share it with friends and family, share your passcode with them, your username. It's a win-win. And then you're helping finance to put it out for free to everybody. PrisonPlanet.tv. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Joel Skousen, a former Marine Corps uh, officer of uh, naval uh, aviator from Vietnam era, of course, best-selling author, researcher, one of the preeminent experts in the world on secure homes, on strategic relocation. I made a film with him, and he has a big book available at InfoWarsStore.com that breaks all that down. Uh, and, of course, his uncle was Cleon Skousen, uh, who wrote The Naked Communist and started a lot of the libertarian constitutional movement you see by understanding why ultra-rich were funding communism. Uh, and so he joins us now. Uh, I, I don't like saying, see, I told you so. I got a sick feeling when I got a call last night from Joe Biggs at about 7.30, 8 o'clock that they had just shot and killed one of them and were calling it a shootout. I had a suspicion it wasn't a shootout. The media ran the headlines. It was a shootout even today. Oregon standoff, militiamen killed. And now we can put up the new headlines with militiamen on video cameras with guns screaming angrily. You know, it's a bloodbath, an Armageddon. We're going to get you. I mean, you couldn't script it worse. To, to, to start a civil war, to start a war on patriots, Obama rolling out against the guns. I mean, uh, if Obama prays his little pillow at night, this is what he's praying for. And if this is successful, they'll then have attacks on federal buildings, provocateur or staged, to really 
go to the next phase of oppression. That's my view. We'll see what Joel Skousen says. He had a great plan for him to leave. The sheriff pretty much took our plan that we sussed out and came to them uh, two days later and said, this is what you should do. Uh, and, and then that all changed. Uh, so this is now a disaster. Uh, Joel Skousen, uh, do you concur with what I'm saying? What can you add to it? What you warned of is now unfolding. Well, it certainly has, uh, Alex. Um, I predicted that this wouldn't end well and would end in, you know, at a federal shootout. What is interesting to me, though, is how the feds allowed uh, them. I think they lured them out of the refuge um, or, you know, Bundy and his group may have showed up at the community meeting last week uh, unannounced and it may have cut the feds off by surprise. But, you know, to, to be in a standoff situation, though there was no direct armed confrontation, they were still armed and they were you know, claiming to defend that refuge. And then to, to drive out of there and expect not to be arrested was kind of interesting. Uh, the fact that they got away with it the first time allowed them to take on this meeting in John Day with this other uh, public uh, meeting and to address their cause. And obviously the feds had set them up so that they ambushed them on the way out there. They pulled them over, as you've reported, you know, in a car. And what is really interesting is the fact that it was clear that they intended to shoot these people because rather than, uh, you know, surround them, I mean, they had their hands out the car and they shot at them with their hands out the car. And that's why they took off the second time or the first time uh, and tried to evade the shooting, uh, end up crashing. And then with hands out of the car, they were being shot at again. So, you know, uh, Finnicum, who's a very mild-mannered, grandfatherly type, well-spoken um, a Mormon. He's a good religious man. Uh, it's a shame that he's the one that got shot. I mean, this guy was uh, taking the higher ground. He, uh, you know, there's conflicting reports about what happened when he got out of the car, but clearly he was not armed. His hands were in the air. And it's true that he may have been fed up. You know, one of the witnesses in talking to Bundy's bodyguard said that he rushed the officers, but I don't think that's really what happened. What I think was in his anger saying, look, if you're gonna kill me, then go ahead and shoot. And he was you know, walking forward to them, basically bearing his chest to them with his hands. But there's no justification for the police, the FBI or whoever it was, to shoot him in the head when his hands are in the air. I don't care if you're walking towards him or even- Absolutely, so it, it's, it's going towards murder, leaning towards per, uh, the fact that the feds have decided to try to provocateur something because they were able successfully because of plants, I think, Joel, to demonize uh, the uh, land rights movement there? Well, it's clear that they, they didn't want a Waco in the sense of a siege. Uh, they could have besieged that uh, refuge uh, weeks earlier. They could have cut off all contact and they could have cut off any food supplies, but they didn't. Uh, I think what they really wanted to do is to portray that this was a shootout with the militia, which it was not a shootout. In, uh, there was no f guns fired from the car whatsoever. There was no guns raised to defend themselves, only hands out the window. And what's interesting here is that there are now six witnesses to this murder. And although there are gonna be defendants in their own trials and things, we have six credible witnesses yes. you know, that, uh, that he was shot with his hands up. The governor to... should order the state police to release their squad car videos. I don't expect the feds to, but if they don't instantly release these, it shows the six witnesses are telling the truth. Do you think it's a mishap by the whoever shot them, or do you think no, this is part of a larger plan? This is part of a larger plan. They had to go in there uh, trigger-happy, wanting to take these people down, and, uh, and they did so. In fact, the fact that they peppered this car with bullets with people's hands up where they had to grasp around and, and find some kind of white flag. I mean, uh, one way- They might said, have been planning to kill them all and, and set them up in a shootout. You know, clearly when you, sh when you shoot that many bullets into a car, you're intending to kill everybody in the car. And that's simply unwarranted. I don't care if there's weapons in the car. The point is- I totally no agree, Joel. You're a smart guy, and, and, and that's why we've got you here. What do you think the big picture is? Do you agree that they walked into a trap what do we do now to get those people inside the refuge out who are running around saying they're going to fight to the end? I mean, this is deteriorating quickly. Do you agree? Absolutely. And it's foolish to fight to the end. I mean, clearly they need to defuse this situation as we have uh, encouraged them to do from the very beginning and live to fight another day. And what does I say is you need to 
you figure out another Hammond, someone who's being oppressed by the BLM, who's got a clear case like the Bundys had on their ranch in Nevada. Shouldn't they just they leave now and go directly unarmed to the police department, get out and lay on the ground? Because I think if they've gone this far, they may kill more people that come out if they catch them out on the road somewhere. Well, I only disagree in the sense that I don't think that the feds want to create another Waco there. They've already got a murder charge being aired about in the internet, which is enlivening these things. And that may well have been why they shot one, to see if they can't uh, throw the militia movement into a, uh, um, you know, an armed conflict with the nation. I don't think it's going to go to civil war. I don't think it's going to get... No, I agree. I agree it's not going to go to civil war, but it creates the narrative for the background for in the future to persecute the patriots. Yes, it certainly does. And uh, it makes it any it makes it almost impossible now to do an Ammon Bundy style standoff, even in defense of someone like the Hammonds. When you go in armed and anything, now everyone's going to be primed to say, yeah, take them down, put the feds in. They're going to have to cover up this murder, though. And I think they will. I think they'll sequester the dash cam videos if there were any there. They won't, won't allow them to be shown. They'll be sealed in court testimony. It will be their word against mine. And I'll predict they're going to let the uh, federal authorities off scot-free. This will enliven the movement and enrage it. Uh, but I clearly don't think, because Bundy lost the high ground by staying too long, um, and it ended up poorly, uh, it's going to en enliven a certain portion of the movement. But I was afraid that there were some agent provocateurs there within the refuge they seem to know everywhere about uh, uh, about their planned movements to set up this trap going to John Day. In fact, the meeting may have been organized in order to lure them out again. Joel Skousen, editor of WorldAffairsBrief.com, is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. If you just joined us, um, the whole thing stinks to high heaven, Joel. And you look at what else is happening in the world. Joel Skousen, World Affairs Brief, uh, the editor. What are we facing right now? Just as a gestalt uh, with Hillary election. Uh, Trump saying you won't be in the debate, things like that. Well, I think Trump, first of all, made uh, a very wise strategic move by evading the debate. It wasn't really the Megyn Kelly thing that he was evading. Uh, it was the Muslim trap that they had set up. They had two or three, uh, uh, you know, uh, immigrants, one Muslim, one Hispanic, ready and primed to ask him embarrassing questions to try to focus uh, on that issue. And uh, they were setting up a major trap for him. So. And now everybody will talk about him instead. He'll end up getting more viewers than the debate going everywhere else. Absolutely. He's going to, it's always a win win situation. Trump's actually showing quite a bit of political finesse despite the way he speaks. Uh, I'm surprised that he is able to keep them uh, churning. And, uh, uh, well, he does dumb down his speech. I mean, he's super smart. I mean, he's doing that to be more populist. It's, uh, it's surprising. Yeah, he did make a major error, I thought, when he talked about, yeah, I can deal with Pelosi, I can deal with the Schumer, I can deal with McConnell and all these people, no problem at all. That's really not the kind of message that conservatives... Sure, they can to. say that that means he's being establishment. Yeah. Now, I don't think he is controlled by the establishment. I mean, he just simply can't stick to a script. Nobody who's controlled would act that way. Uh, but nevertheless, it's very clear when they tr uh, trot out Ben Sass the very popular senator from Nebraska now to take on the anti-Trump movement. He's uh, going from campaign to campaign in Iowa, talking down Trump. Well, that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced.
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.